Need more help or just want to show your support? Then head over to my Patreon and join my team, where you can get exclusive content like ebooks and bonus plays, as well as early access to my vids and more. Link in the description below. All right, welcome back, YouTubers and Madden fans. This is Mad Money Shot, continuing uh, in my tip video series. Um, you know, you guys know I do money plays. I hope you enjoy these tip videos as well. They're very popular. I get a lot of views on them. Uh, you guys seem to like them. So if you want me to continue, make sure you hit the like button for me, or let me know in the comment section what, you, what type of tip video you want me to do next. But for now, uh, I've been noticing through dealing with some of my one-on-one -on -one sessions that I do through my Patreon account. If you guys don't know, I do one-on-one -on -one sessions with people. If you join a certain tier on my Patreon, uh, if you never checked that out, link in the description below if you think you need it. Um, other than that I've been working with some people over there and I really I enjoy doing them because I really get to see the other side of who I'm dealing with and who I'm talking to when I make these videos uh, people that I didn't know uh, need help in a lot of things that really might seem kind of basic so if you're watching this and you already know these things I appreciate you watching anyway but if you're watching this and you already know these things I try to understand that there are a lot of people out there that don't know these things so uh, like I said dealing in my one-on-one -on -one sessions that really drove that point home a couple days ago um, and I really wanted to make this video uh, in, in kind of response to that because I think a lot of people might need that so well what I want to do here is kind of a two or three part series I want to do I don't know I might try to fit on this video I'm not sure yet as I'm recording it I'll find out I don't want it to be too long but uh, today what I want to go over is how to uh, recognize defensive coverages I think that's one of the more important things a lot of people don't do that they don't recognize it's really important to do a pre-snap read just like in regular NFL you have to see what you're looking at and you have to know what beats it and I'm going to go over that in this video uh, what I would also like to do in a upcoming video if you guys want to see that is go over the audible adjustments on offense and defense so like i said let me know i do what you guys tell me to do it's it's really helpful with your feedback so make sure you let me know in the comment section but for now i'm going to go ahead i'm going to pick a play on offense uh just something random and i'm going to basically uh try to tell you how to see what you're looking at on the other side so let's just pick something out of the a slot it doesn't really matter just some sort of random pass play um, i was actually liking the pa scissors flood so we'll take that and then on defense i'm controlling the defense today more i don't typically do that uh, but I'm going to do a random play out of the nickel, let's say, or it doesn't really matter, random play out of anything. But the reason that I'm doing that is so I can show you the play out right away. Uh, you're gonna, I'm going to show you how you can basically tell what coverage you're looking at pre-snap. But I also want to say that there are certain coverages that you're not going to be able to figure out pre-snap. Things like the cover nine show two. If you have a way of figuring out that whether you're looking at a cover nine or a cover two invert or a cover um, a cover six, you know some of these are really hard to spot uh, that you might only be able to really spot after the play starts. Or the easiest way to do it is after the play happens, they show you previous play. So if you're not watching previous play, after every play, you're making a mistake right there. So always check previous play. It'll definitely be one of the easier ways to spot some of these more unique defenses. Uh, but realistically, a lot of people mix in, uh, don't mix in defenses. A lot of people run the same defense the entire game. So watching previous play is huge. But some people mix it up. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to hit random here so that I can try to guess what the defense is. And I'll show you some keys to doing that. So we're just going to hit random, hit a random ass play. So right off the gate, safety drops down. I know right away this is one of two defenses. This is either cover three or a cover two man and since my formation is offset to the one side uh, it's a, a pretty good indicator that it's a cover it's a cover one man because for one thing if it was a regular zone this receiver would not follow me but if it was a regular zone he wouldn't even be on my side of the field this certain formations give away what the defense is right away and if it's if it's heavy to one side if there's two wide receivers on one side no wide receivers on the other side and there's two cornerbacks on the left side because of those two wide receivers you know right away it's a man so this right here i know without a doubt is a cover one man let's go ahead and let's hit the button on the other side and show and sure enough it is it's that simple um you know what i mean simple things like that are so huge now that i know that it's a cover one man i just gotta know what beats it and this play that i picked i picked it for a reason because i can turn this play to beat anything it's a cover two concept right at the gate which a lot of people run but it has a lot of man beaters so i got Selick, who's a man beater he's going to be my number one read and uh blunt you know he's a pretty good man beater as well so like i said i'll go ahead and I'll run one time that really wasn't the purpose of this video but watch how Selick here uh that acceleration boost because i know that that's a man beating play um is going to be my read it's that simple you have to make this as simple as possible so here we go guy shifts down again looks like the exact same defense actually which i'm hoping not to get too many of the same looks 
bucks. Uh, but yeah, we got a cover one man again. It actually looks like the exact same play, which is kind of weird. So we're just going to go ahead and run a play so we can move it on to the next one. I'm not going to actually try to complete the pass. But either way, um, you know, that's, I'm hoping to get a couple of different looks. So here we go once again. Now this looks more like, it looks like a man coverage again because I have my one receiver or my cornerback over there. Uh, but it actually looks like um, it might be a cover two man. Uh, which is still kind of has the same place beating it. If you're not sure, motioning a guy will tell. See, like I said, I, I really couldn't see the number on the jersey. That's why I wasn't sure if that was a corner because you can't really see the numbers on the jerseys to the point where I know whether that's a cornerback or not. So I know now that I have one cornerback on the right side so it's a zone coverage. Nobody followed me when I motioned two, so I know it's a zone. It's most likely a cover two. How do you tell the difference between a cover two, a cover three, and a cover four? Uh, for one, these cornerbacks are down kind of far for a cover four. Anytime you have a two, two high safeties, and that's these guys up here. I'll try to highlight them. These two guys right here, I'm reading these guys on pretty much every play pre-snap. So these guys right here are my two safeties. I know that they're back. If it was a cover three, typically one might drop down pre-snap. Uh, a lot of, there are cover three plays where a safety will drop down. It's like a robber concept where they'll drop down to a yellow zone after the play starts. So you have to watch the safeties after the play starts. But ultimately, uh, my pre-snap read, what they call a shell look, is this is a cover two shell. So that could change once I snap the ball. So the first thing I'm going to do once I snap the ball is I'm going to keep an eye on those safeties. If those safeties stay back or if they one of these safeties, um, let's say one of these safeties actually covers out this way and then this one comes towards the middle, that's the cover six look that I was talking about. But you're going to watch your safeties every time. Your safeties give away the play after the snap. So if I snap the ball and this guy drops down to cover three, and I know that right away. So my pre-snap read, I just have to change it, but I have to have that in my mind. So that's pretty much a look. I'm going to guess cover two, but like I said, we'll go ahead and we'll we'll pull up the diagram. Sure enough, it's a cover two. So I know right away that this is my play. Like I said, this play here that I'm running can beat anything. So I know that my cover two beater is Brent Selleck and LeGarrette Blunt. Uh, essentially, when I drive back, the, the outside corner, who's the, other, the cover two outside corner, and I'll go ahead and I'll show him again real quick. Uh, this cover two outside corner here, he has to either drop down on the running back or he's going to drop back into coverage on the tight end. So my read is simple. I'm reading what he does. Whatever he does, I throw to uh, the other guy. So we'll go ahead and we'll rock this one time. Like I said, I, I saw that it was a cloud flat, so I know already cloud flats drop back. So my running back's open underneath. I take what I'm given, and boom, I get 15 yards. Real simple. So I'm hoping next I get a cover three. If not, I'll have to do a couple of things. All right, so I had to back out and manually pick a cover three concept. Um, this one here is a little bit muddled. It's a 3-4, and the reason that it looks a little bit muddled is because I don't really have two wide receivers on the one side. So it's kind of a lazy cover three. If I motion this guy over, that cornerback's going to react. The safety's going to shift down. Now it looks like an easy, obvious cover three because you have a receiver on both sides um, to give that away. But basically, the only thing you're looking for when it comes to a cover three, and like I said, the safety shifted over because the receiver shifted over. So there's no real reason for him to be in the center of the field. He wants to react to that receiver. He wants to be closer to that receiver. So the only thing that it really is going to tell me um, if it's a cover three is this single high safety. If it's single high safety, and like I said, it could be a man. You have to be aware of that. The motion will give it away, um, and the position of the cornerback a lot of times will give it away. But a, a single high safety is a pretty obvious cover three concept. Like I said, there are cover threes where the other safety, and I'm not even sure where he is, where the other safety will drop down. So you have to watch these safeties. After the snap, you always have to watch what your safeties are doing first, and then you continue to read. So so now that I know it's a cover three, this play is not really designed for a cover three. But the circle route, as you can see, comes right up that seam. So that's an obvious. Anytime you have a slot receiver, um, you know, sometimes the tight end too. If I wanted to put, if I wanted to change this tight end into a uh, a fade, he's going to come open right in the cover three uh, seam. Uh, but those two guys right there, you see, there's an obvious hole in the cover three. Uh, one of the better things to beat cover three though is in your audibles. If you do your audibles, your hot routes. Uh, and you put your outside receiver, which is Alshon Jeffrey. If you put Alshon Jeffrey on an out route, and I'll go ahead and I'll show that. If I can show it. Yeah, if you put him on an out route and then do it again and smart route it, that is a cover three beater every time. Um, not, I mean, not every time, but it's going to beat cover three nine times out of ten. That's a really good cover three beater. Another really good one is the, uh, I'm in the way here, I think it's the comeback. The comeback is a pretty good cover three beater too, but it's not as good as the out route. The out route is um, way more money. Um, and then, like I said, your streak up here. These are all obvious cover three beaters. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to run this now that I know what it is. Like I said, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to throw this out route. You see how there's just no coverage there. He's just wide open. He's going to be every time. Now we got a cover four. 
And like I said, in my opinion, this is a little bit harder to decipher between a cover four and a cover two. But in my opinion, the cornerbacks typically sit back a little bit more um, to get back into their cover four drops. So like I said, a lot of times cover two corners will be up and cover four corners will be back. That's really the only way to tell the difference. You can see, obviously, the safeties are back. Um, so the further they are back, I think the easier it is to tell. It's just the animation. It's not 100% guaranteed, but I just find that um, typically your cover two look is a little bit more in the box. Not your safeties. Your safeties typically are like at a, at a reasonable depth, um, but your cover two corners are not typically down because that'll get them easily beat where they want to go. So that's probably one of the easier ways um, to decipher a cover four difference between a cover two difference. So I'm going to reset that play. I didn't mean to do that. So here we got a cover four. What beats cover four is a little bit different. Uh, for one thing, I think cover four is vulnerable over the middle most times. A lot of sets that people use, like out of the three, four odd they use a cover four, there's only one, uh, per, there's only one yellow zone in the middle. This one has two. But either way, um, it's still a little bit vulnerable in the middle if it is that type that has one yellow uh, guy in the middle. Now, if it's like it is here where there's two, I'd say the most vulnerable other than obviously the run because this is, you know, you're not going to see this look very often because there's only three down linemen. You're going to see, you'll see this way more online out of the 3-4 odd. And I probably should have did it out of 3-4 odd. That's a very popular play. But either way, uh, this is going to be vulnerable outside, uh, which is typically outside underneath is probably the best way to do that. And how I could do that is, you know, I could put Aguilar here on, I didn't mean to do that, on a uh, flat route. He'll get open underneath that. Um, the running back will get open underneath. If I, if I leave the play as is, the running backs get open a lot under cover fours. Um, because you know they, these guys are all going to be pulling back that zone. This is a this is a deep defense, and I don't know why a lot of people run it. Because to be honest, I feel like it has a lot of holes. So this is something that you typically, like I said, if it's the type where it only has one yellow zoning linebacker in the middle, that's the three four version. Uh, it's very weak over the middle. You just have to flood the middle. So if this was that look, I'd have Aguilar, Ertz, or the running back to throw to over the middle. And then um, if it's this version like this, where it's an obvious pass defense. Um, running the ball obviously is going to be going to be something because it's the three three down linemen to five uh, five linemen. Uh, but other than that, the outside routes are really the best way to go. As you can see, everything gets pulled back, and then we have the underneath stuff. Uh, but cover four, like I said, really easy to beat to the outside. So let's end it on that. I showed you guys uh, something that beats pretty much every coverage except for man. I didn't go over man. Let me just do that real quick before I end this. Um, because that is something that to me is the easiest one to do if that makes sense uh, Hit the cover through they don't have a man adjustment here All right, so I guess man under smoke here is the only man um, So really what beats man is the reason I didn't really go over too much is everything You know, what I mean man to me is one of the worst unless it's a cross man uh, Pretty much man is beaten by just about every adjustment So um, the r1 route the way that that, R, that r1 route curls you're gonna see how easy this Accelerates and just destroys man Vlagar blunt's not fast but he, uh, you see how he gets away. My controller's rattling. You can see how he gets away um, from the coverage. Anything that has an arch in it like that, like Aguilar's pretty good against man. Anything that has like a, a, a dramatic uh, turn in it, it, it just has a way of beating man. The slant beats man. That's why I put Ertz on a uh, slant. The um, the, the uh, drag route beats man. That's why I'm putting Ertz. I'm doing all that on Ertz right now. The uh, the zig route beats man you know what i mean if you have a, if you have a good speed anything that has a dramatic arcing uh, effect is going to beat man it's just it's just the support coverage but it has its usefulness but it's just not in the way that you would think so something like a flat route which doesn't have an arch or what jeffrey's running what smith is running those things that are just straight they don't beat man you know i mean they'll they'll get in trouble for man you just see there i throw a pick six yeah you know i mean so those things i thought the play would end bro oh that's right because i'm controlling this so it's gonna keep going but either way those things unless you're running like a dramatic arch in the pattern it will not beat man coverage it's that simple yeah, that's pretty much it the in routes and the out routes are pretty good against man too uh you wouldn't think it to look at it but um, like I said, anything that basically turns, <laughs> it's going to be man. <laughs> Unless you've got a top-notch athlete or a top-notch man corner. That's the one caveat. So don't try that against Patrick Peterson necessarily. Uh, somebody like that who has all the physical tools and, the, and, and a good man capabilities. But other than that, man is one of the easier to beat. So that's it. I go over the most uh, used, the most consistent. Like I said, if somebody's running something that's not consistent or the most used, like a cover six or something like that, or cover nine, you just have to watch the pre or the play afterwards. And if you guys want to see more videos like this, do me a favor to the like button or let me know in the comment section. And that's it. Thanks for watching, man. Money shout out.